This is the first tutorial out of three on our clustering algorithm Swift. In the first tutorial, after a brief introduction to Swift and what it can do, we will discuss the requirements for installing Swift, both software and hardware, describe the installation itself, and then describe how to analyze one sample by clustering using Swift. So first of all, why would we want to use automated analysis, and in particular, why use the Swift algorithm? First, it's now, I think, becoming more and more clear that automated analysis is both more objective and now more efficient than manual gating. Automatic clustering allows us to use all dimensions simultaneously, and that contrasts with the manual gating procedures that people normally use, where only two parameters are used at a time. The simultaneous use of all dimensions allows much more precise boundaries to be defined for the various cell subpopulations. It is now clear that automated methods are, are beginning to outperform manual analysis, as shown, for example, in the FlowCap competitions. In particular, Swift is a model-based method that allows consistent comparisons between samples, and Swift is particularly designed to find very rare subpopulations. And we've been able to go down to a very low level of detection, uh, better than one part in a million in very large data sets. So our SWIFT clustering goals were first of all to handle flow cytometry data with many dimensions, uh, up to 35 for example with CITOF data, and several million events. We wanted to resolve subpopulations across a very wide dynamic range, and you can see in this example uh, there are three clusters chosen out of a SWIFT analysis of a large sample, and the cluster sizes vary from quite small, in this case 69 cells, up to 22,000 cells in the blue cluster. So there is a good dynamic range. We also wanted to be able to resolve subpopulations that are asymmetric in one or more dimensions, and that example is, is shown here. We wanted to allow subpopulations to overlap because that probably reflects the biology very well. And we also wanted to be able to compare a large numbers of samples with each other and to visualize these clustering results in a very streamlined way. There are three stages in Swift that help the program to achieve good separation of all the subpopulations. In the first stage, the expectation maximization algorithm is used, and this is used in a novel iterative uh, sampling procedure, to fit the data to a specified number of Gaussian distributions. At the end of this step, many of the populations may be described very well, but there may be some examples where, for example, uh, a small subpopulation here is not well separated from a neighboring much larger population. Because biologically some of the most interesting populations may be present in exactly this circumstance, we then go through a second stage, uh, the splitting stage in stage 2. And in this stage, all of the populations isolated in stage 1 are examined for multimodality. And if any of these subpopulations are multimodal in any dimension or combination of dimensions, then that subpopulation is split further using the EM algorithm until all the components are unimodal. That may result in too many populations and so in the third stage, the merging stage, all pairs of uh, subpopulations are examined in detail to see whether they can be merged and again the merging criterion that is used is unimodality. If two peaks can be merged and the result is unimodal in all dimensions, then the merging occurs, otherwise the two subpopulations are left separate. Now the requirements for running Swift, first of all the hardware, uh, we can run Swift on th at least three different platforms, uh, Mac, PC or Linux. We recommend at least 16 gigabytes of RAM, although more can be a benefit. For a processor, a uh, dual core is probably minimal. Uh, eight or more cores are preferable because Swift does take full advantage of parallel processing. MATLAB 2013A or higher is recommended, and the MATLAB statistics toolbox is required. 
and also the MATLAB Parallel Computing Toolbox. If you're using Mac OS X, then Lion or Higher is recommended. To install Swift, it's a fairly easy procedure. You uncompress the Swift zip file and then place the resulting Swift folder in the MATLAB user folder and on a Mac for example that would be in your username slash documents slash MATLAB. Now the data requirements for Swift to run. We normally use FCS 3.0 data files. If a compensation matrix is present in that file, Swift will apply the matrix before clustering the data. If there is no compensation matrix, then the data are assumed to be already compensated. At present, Swift does not support external compensation matrices, so if you would like to use an external compensation matrix, that should be applied to the data and it should be saved in suitable form before transferring to Swift. Swift can also read CSV data files. If the first row of a CSV file contains channel names, these will be used. Otherwise, par1, par2, par3, and so on will be used. And it is assumed that CSV files have already been compensated. So for the examples that are going to follow, we'll use an FCS 3.0 file with a compensation matrix as an example. To provide data to Swift, the basic files need to be placed in a specified location, and that is inside the MATLAB Swift DT folder, uh, T for test samples. You can put as many uh, test samples as you would like into the T folder. They can have different compensation matrices, but it is important that they should all have the same uh, parameter names. Once those files have been put in the correct location, then open MATLAB and the MATLAB window should look something like this. Open the Swift folder in the left hand window by double clicking on that. That will show all of the component uh, Swift files so that MATLAB can work with them and then type swift underscore main at the prompt in the MATLAB command window. At this stage there will be some pre-processing and so wait for that to finish and then the user interface to appear. Pre-processing steps uh, involve reading the data and analyzing it for the amount of negative data so that some transformation information can be obtained. Then the user input window appears and this allows you to customize the parameters that Swift uses to analyze the data. First of all, the input cluster number. This is the number of Gaussian distributions that will be used by Swift in the first step. As we explained earlier, this number will be substantially modified by the splitting and merging steps, but it is useful if this number is a reasonable approximation of the expected final number. In this case, we have a number of 100 suggested. Uh, if you think that there will be more than 500 clusters in the final analysis, then you might want to start with two or 300. This is not a critical number because of Swift's ability to self-normalize. And that's shown, for example, in this diagram. We varied the input cluster number over a very wide range from 5 up to 500. And over that range, if we used a very low input cluster number, then Swift did a very large amount of splitting up to this orange line here. And if we used, on the other hand, a very high number of input clusters, then Swift didn't do very much splitting, but it did a large amount of merging. And in all cases, the results converged on a very uniform 50 or 60 uh, clusters for this particular sample. The next decision to be made in Swift is the dimensions that should be used for clustering. These can be toggled on or off in this column here. Normally we use all the fluorescent dimensions and at least the forward scatter and size scatter of the scatter dimensions for clustering. If there is no information in some of, of these channels then these can be turned off to slightly speed up the clustering. 
The result of Swift clustering, uh, one of the results is the median value of all of the clusters in all of the dimensions, and this can be output as desired uh, as set by this column. The next decision is the scaling factors to use for the inverse hyperbolic sine transformation that is the default transformation in Swift. To deal with the negative numbers that are often introduced by compensation, a number of different transformations uh, are commonly used in flow spectrometry data. In this case, we normally use the arcsine uh, transformation, and Swift makes a guess at appropriate numbers to use for scaling for this transformation. If you wish to override these, uh, you can type in your own values in all of the different channels. So once these parameters have been set, you're ready to proceed with the actual clustering run, and so you simply click the button at the top, and Swift will start to analyze the data, and will write the results of that into the same folder. All of the samples in the folder will be processed without any further input using all the parameters that you've just set up. So once that's all finished, then you can move on to tutorial 2, which talks about visualizing the Swift output data, manipulating that and so that it can be uh, examined and analyzed. And tutorial 3 describes how to extend the Swift clustering to multiple samples by making Swift templates assigning those to many samples and then rigorously comparing between samples.